Hi everyone, my name is Luke McGuinness. I'm one of the co-organisers of the conference and as part of it this afternoon I'm going to be giving a very quick introduction to GitHub as a platform for storing, accessing and sharing OR code. Um, so do feel free to tweet at me. I am recording this session asynchronously just because we can't have more than one live stream on the YouTube channel at the same time. And um, so I will be available to answer questions. So just either in the Slack or on Twitter, just let me know. Just to start us off, a quick public service announcement. Being Irish, I pronounce the letter after Q a bit oddly. So when I say OR, what I really mean is R. And um, most people working with this computing language sound like a bunch of pirates to me. And just in case I slip into it over the course of the presentation, you've been warned. So just to give you a brief overview about what I'm hoping to cover through this, um, it's going to be quite interactive in that I'll be working with GitHub itself. And it, because of that, it may not be completely smooth. Uh, I may run into some issues, but hopefully, fingers crossed, everything goes well. Um, so I've broken it down into three kind of sections, each getting more involved in your interaction with GitHub as a platform. Um, so the first is if you're acting as a consumer of code. So looking at how you can install OR packages from GitHub and um, what a lot of the information on GitHub repositories actually mean um, and how you can make lists of packages you think are interesting or follow creators or other coders that you think are producing interesting things so you'll be notified when they release something new. Um, the next level up from that to my mind is a contributor. So if you actually want to create your own repository on GitHub um, if you want to let other creators know that some of their code isn't working as expected, or if you actually want to contribute some of your own code to another project. And then we'll very briefly touch on um, copying a project from GitHub into or Studio locally. And then at the final level, and we might not get to it today, but if not, that's fine. The advantages of GitHub for hosting OR packages. So this is aimed at those who already have OR packages but may not have them online on GitHub and may be hosting them locally. Um, and it's just trying to work through what the advantages of using GitHub as a platform are in terms of bug tracking and using things like automated testing or continuous integration and then building a package website. So we're starting from the ground up and working our way through. So hopefully we'll touch on something for everyone. So just to note what I will not cover um, is setting up Git to work with OR Studio um, because this can be quite finicky to help set up remotely and particularly since I'm not doing it synchronously anymore it's just an extra level of difficulty I'm not going to deal with today. But there are two key resources I'm going to point you towards if you want to set up Git um, as part of this workshop. So the first one is Happy Git and GitHub for the user. Um, and that should be a capital OR, a bit of a play on words, but it's brilliant. It's happy Git with OR. Um, it's an online free book. There's loads of resources there to help get you up and running really quickly. I highly recommend it. And then the second one is Dang It Git, which is fixes for common mistakes made when using Git. Um, yeah. So the first thing I want to talk about is just very briefly the distinction between git and github so git is a software a version control software which allows you to organize and maintain different versions of the same file so you can track changes to files and to projects more generally over time um, and github is an online cloud-based platform that allows you to host git-based repositories so it's an important distinction they're not one and the same um, so Git is a software and GitHub is the platform. But GitHub offers a lot of functionality beyond just hosting these GitHub, uh, or these Git, excuse me, repositories in terms of issue tracking, in terms of um, package websites, things like this. So we're gonna explore some of that as well today. But just to note that going into this, Git and GitHub are not the same thing. So, um, I'm going to use one of my own packages as the example. So we'll just head straight to github.com to show you. I'm assuming for this, uh, I'm just going to hide the controls here. Just give me one second. Yep. So for this workshop, I'm going to assume that you've already set up a GitHub account. I know in the Slack, I encourage you to do so. If not, it doesn't matter. It's something you can do later on. 
But for me, I'm assuming that when you go to github.com, you're getting this homepage view rather than the please sign up view. So I'm going to use one of my own repositories um, as the exemplar. Well, exemplar, example, I think is better. Exemplar might be a stretch. Just to show you and talk you through some of the common aspects of an OR package hosted on GitHub. Um, so when you go to an OR package, your first view is of the files in it, which are up the top. You have some extra information on the right hand side. Often there's a short description and an about section, which tells you a little bit about the package, what its purpose is, and there may be a link to a website. Often this is where you can find more documentation. Um, and you also have common tags. So these are useful if you're searching for a particular package using the search bar up here. Um, you can use these tags to try and find related packages. Um, you have the contributors on the right hand side as well, which show you the people who've contributed or, or made or created code for this specific package. So here you can see that myself and a few other people have written code for this package, Rob this. Um, but then arguably most importantly for people at the consumer level, so those who just want to use code from GitHub, is this section of what's called the README, which is an introductory piece of text providing, again, some context on the package, and most importantly, some information on how to install the package from GitHub. Now, most of you, even if you haven't used GitHub, the platform before, it's likely that you will have installed packages from GitHub. Um, and there's a range of reasons why you might do this. The most important is that the package version on GitHub is often where a lot of the new developmental functions are released first. So you might, the version of a particular package on GitHub might be more advanced than that, which is available via CRAN and via the common install packages command. So you can see here that, and again, this is an important part of GitHub repositories, the README badges. And um, not all repositories will have this, but if they're there, they're often very useful. So you can see that I've been a bit lax in the last while and that the last version of this package that was uploaded to CRAN was over a year ago. Um, now I've done a lot of development work on this package since then, but it's only on the GitHub repository. So that shows you there's some advantages to installing packages from GitHub. On the flip side of that, installing packages from GitHub, they can be less stable because they are developmental. So oftentimes installing from CRAN um, is the best way to go, unless there's a specific functionality you know is available in the GitHub version of a package, but not in the CRAN version. So there's two other things I want to point out here quickly, just so you can get an idea. If you stumble across a package on CRAN, you get some sense of, of how good or, or the, the level of quality of the package. Um, and these are the ORCMD check um, is passing. So what this is, is it's an indication of whether you'll be able to install the package properly, pretty much. It shows that it, it's passing a lot of the common tests that all packages have to go through. So if this is failing, it often means that the developer is actively working on the package and it might not be robust or you might want to wait a little while until they've finished working on it. Um, and then the other thing is this thing called code coverage or code cup. Um, and again, a higher code coverage just means the developer of that package has spent a bit of time writing tests and ensuring everything works as it should. And it's again, it's, it's a proxy of, um, you know, the, the investment and the time spent on the package. It, it doesn't necessarily mean that the packages with these badges are of high quality, but again, it's trying to show you what you should be looking out for if you're installing packages from GitHub. <coughs> Excellent. So the other thing that I really wanted to cover very briefly is the idea of once you have an account, what you can do is you can star or you can follow other repositories for stars and other people for follows on GitHub. So you can see that up here, 19 people have starred the RobViz repository. Um, and starring is a way of essentially adding it to your own list. And um, so if I go in up into the right hand corner to my account, I can see my stars here. So if I select that, it'll show me the list, which should be quite long, I imagine. 
need to see my big ugly mug there. You can see the, the repositories that I've starred most recently that I think would be interesting me into the future. So it's a really easy way of keeping track of upcoming repositories that might not be on CRAM yet, might not be widely available, but that you want to keep an eye on as things, as they develop. Um, and it, it's a good way to just kind of collect things. So I have a lot of packages here related to work I want to do on RobViz at some point in the future. Excellent. And then the other thing is you can look at, ooh, how do I get there? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I've gone wrong. Um, the other thing you can look at is the people you're following. So if, for example, I wanted to follow Wolfgang, who I think is... I go to, I perform a search, it gives you all of these options for the search. So you can search repositories, code commits. But if I go down to users, I find Wolfgang here, who's the author of the metaphor package for meta analysis. And this is his user homepage on GitHub. Uh, it shows me some information about what he's working on at the moment and how to get in touch with them. So if I want to follow him so that on my own GitHub homepage, I'll see information related to what he's working on, I can choose to follow him. And so that just means when I go to github.com, any work he's doing will come up in all activity. So I'll be able to keep an eye on if he releases a new version of Metaphor, if he releases a new functionality, it'll appear there for me. So that really covers most of what I think you'll be working with as a consumer, what you'll be working with GitHub as a consumer. Um, so just to move on a little bit in terms of if you actually want to start using GitHub to, to share your own code. Um, so again, from the GitHub homepage, so github.com, you go to this little plus button and we're going to create a new repository. So you can call your repository pretty much anything you like. And your repository name is made up of your own username, in my case, McGinlu, forward slash the repository name. So for example, we're gonna call this ESMA or temp. Um, GitHub will quite helpfully check all of your other repository names to ensure that you don't have any duplications and um, because you can only have one of each, they're meant to be unique. Um, you can enter an optional description, so temp, for the ESMA or conference. You can choose to make it public or private. So public means that it's readily findable, it's indexed on things like um, Google. So if people are searching for your repository, they will be able to find it. Um, but private means that only you and people you invite to the project are able to see it. So this can be quite important if you're working, particularly if you're working on analysis for an academic paper, you might set up the repository as private in the first place. And then once the paper associated project is finished or the paper is published, you then make it public. So it's a way to kind of embargo your code and your work and your research until you're ready. Um, and that's where the distinction between private and public. Another thing is if you're developing an OR package and you want to make sure that it's at a stable working state before you release it more publicly, setting it as private for the first little while as you get everything set up. And then once you're ready, making it public, sharing it on Twitter, doing that all together is a really nice workflow for kind of developing um, your packages. So when you're starting a good, if you're starting an empty repository, a good thing to do is to add a readme file, which is what we were talking about earlier. It's the little bit of information when someone arrives at your repository and um, it provides some information about you know, what it is and how they can install the package and how they use it pretty much. The other thing that's useful is to choose a license. Um, now I most commonly go for the MIT license, which is very permissive, but it just allows people, if they come to your repository, to know what they can and can't do with the code contained within. And then you just click the big green button, create a repository, and GitHub will set it all up for you. So we'll be able to see it now that again, we have the, the URL is github.com, my username, and then the name of the repository, which I've seen. So you can see that the description was copied into the little about section. If you want to edit this, you click the gear cog here, 
and it'll give you some options. So you can add in, you know, I want to say this is for a conference. It'll pop up with a, a drop down of potential options. So uh, conference, we'll just go with that. You can also add a website um, or rewrite your description and just save the changes. So this is your basic repository. Um, and one of the most common things that people will want to do on a repository is to either flag something that they themselves have to do in the future, or if you're, come, if you're looking at someone else's work, tell the maintainer of that package that you, there's something wrong with their code or you'd like them to do, add in a new feature, or just generally you have a query about something the package does. And the best way for it to do all of this is what's called issues. So if we go to the issues tab here, it'll bring us up saying, welcome to issues. You don't have any yet because it's a brand new repository. That's not surprising. Um, and what we'll do is we'll create the first issue for this. So you click new issue, again, the big green button. It asks you to provide a title. So here we're gonna say my first issue. So here you can put pretty much everything you want anything you want related to the package. So if you want to have a to-do list, cover issues as topic. And you, GitHub is quite useful because you can use um, markdown formatting. So if we want to make this a checklist item, we can use this. Alternatively, we can use this button here, which is add a task list. So item two, if we want to look see what it'll look like when it's finished we click the preview tab here um, and you can see that these are our checklist items so you can tick them off yourself so you go back to write and we'll just say item three well maybe we won't yeah item three uh, and then we're going to say submit new issue so once you've submitted your issue it'll appear again in the issues tab it shows you what you said and if other people, it provided your repository is public, if other people want to comment on your issue or say, I wanna see this feature too, and um, they can leave their own comments below. So one common way of expressing, if someone has said, I'd like to see this feature and you don't want to comment, but you want to show support, you can add little emojis. So upvote or downvote, or say that you're, you're keeping an eye on this and you're watching. So it's just a way of, of interacting with people on the website. Um, along the right hand side, provided it's your own repository, you can edit some of these things. So you can add a label. So you can say it's a bug, something isn't working. Excuse me. You can say it's documentation, you're asking for more information or an enhancement. They're kind of the three common, or th to at least in my mind, I use the most three common labels just to let people know um, what category this issue falls into. Um, yeah so issues are a really good way of capturing bug reports or capturing tasks related to the repository um, and they work very well within the github setup so the next thing we're going to talk about is branches and branching as part of working with code on github um, and branching is a really important part of developing code on github it makes part of what's called the github flow which is how software is developed using GitHub as the main platform to do so. Um, so essentially the main concept is that you're, within a Git repository, you can have a number of different branches. And um, so these are accessed for the repo your new repository on GitHub by viewing here. So you can see at the moment that we only have one, which is the main, <coughs> excuse me, which is what would be expected for a brand new repository. And the thinking on this approach is that anything on the main branch should be what's called deployable. So it should be ready to go. It should use it, should be able to use it without any issues. And that all development work, anything that could break the package or the code is done on a different branch. So you have one branch going along where everything is working perfectly. You take a branch off of that to work on in terms of implementing new functionality that might be a bit Tetchy as you as you develop it, and then when everything is ready to go, you merge back in that development branch into the main branch, which now has the new functionality in it as well. 
Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and do this with something really simple. So we're going to create a new branch to make an edit to the readme, and then we're going to merge it back in. So it's just to demonstrate the workflow. So for example, here, what we're going to do is we're going to call this um, readme. I've noticed my typing is, is truly terrible. It explains a lot of the bugs in my packages. So if you type in readme, um, because it has, doesn't exist already, it'll give you this option to create branch readme. So if you click that, you'll see that the, the URL has also changed slightly. So we still have the base URL, which is github.com, my username, the name of the repository, but we now have this tree and readme bit afterwards. So if you're on any branch other than the main branch, you'll see it here. So you're part of the tree, um, but you're on the readme branch. Um, I, GitHub also gives you some information about how the branch you're currently on compares to the main branch. So you'll see here that it says this branch is even with main, meaning that there's no extra code or changes made to this branch that aren't reflected in the main branch. So we're gonna make one of those changes now, just as an example. So we're going to try and add some extra text to the readme file. And we do this by clicking the little edit button here which will bring us into the native GitHub editor. So what we're gonna just say is something really simple like we're adding this text to test branch. Um, we scroll down and we say commit changes. We add a little bit of information. So adding text um, and then we want to commit to the readme branch and then we commit our changes. Excellent. So if we go back to code, we see that we're still on the readme branch and um, readme now has some new pushes or changes um, and GitHub is encouraging you to compare and open what's called a pull request. So pull requests are again one of the key parts along with branching of the GitHub workflow. Um, so once you're finished making changes to your development branch, you um, can open a pull request. So that's what we're going to do. So at the moment, we're on the readme branch still, um, but we're going to open a pull request now to ask the maintainer, which in the case of this repository is also us, to pull our changes that we've made on the readme branch back into the main branch. So it'll have, so the main branch will also have this new information. So if you go compare and pull request, it opens this new format and it shows you what branches you're comparing. So base here means the one that you is the, the cornerstone or your main branch, but you can change this if you want. And then your comparison branch is the readme, which is the one we've made an edit to. So we've added that extra text to. Um, the title can be automatically generated or you can change it. And then similar to working with issues, you can put extra information in here um, for yourself, for future reference or for the maintainer. So um, it'll also give you some information about the ability to merge the branches. Um, and what this means is that there's no conflict or no conflictions no conflicts between the two. So you don't have competing information in the two branches. Um, that can happen sometimes if more than one person are working on the package or the code at the same time. And all that happens then is you have to do resolve what's called a merge conflict, um, which means that you have to manually decide which of the two versions you want to keep. Um, and again, it, it's quite straightforward to do um, once you're used to it, but I'd refer you back to that happy git with or uh, book, which has some really great resources on it. So, right, we're going to create this pull request and we've added some information. Um, GitHub will check the ability to merge in the branch like we've been talking about a second ago. Uh, and once this gives you the tick, you can merge in the pull request. So this is again copying the information, that the changes we've made to the readme branch back into the main branch so that it, it's available to other users um, from the main branch. So we go merge pull request. It'll again add, ask you to add any new information. It gives you a title. Um, and then you can go confirm merge. 
um, and then you can delete the branch. So now that you've made the changes safely by branching off the main branch, making the change and then merging it back in, you can get rid of this extra development branch that you created. So we can delete this here. Excellent. So we've now made a change to the main branch and we can examine that if we go back to code and you'll see from the URL, but we'll once again back on the main branch, but you see that the text that we added has now been copied across to the main branch via our pull request. You'll also see that because we've cleaned up our branches when we were finished, we no longer have the readme branch. Um, and this is again, just to, to really hammer it home, a safe way to add new functionality and new changes to your repository without breaking the main branch and um, breaking the, the main version of the package. Excellent. So what have I left to cover? Yeah, so with pull requests, it's quite, the, the, the example I've given you here is doing a pull request on your own repository. But where these really come into their own is when you want to make a change to another repository. So for example, if we go to, again, we're gonna go back to Wolfgang. Spelled that wrong. I spelled the second second name wrong. So we go to the metaphor package by Wolfgang, um, just as another example of a repository. So again, you can see the contributors down the right-hand side. You have a little bit of information here describing the package and pointing you towards a website with more information. Um, you have again the RCMD check passing, saying that the build is working. Um, you can see the huge number of downloads it has every month, which is another good sign of, of quality and that people are using it and aren't reporting too many issues. But say you wanted to make changes or contribute some code to this um, package. So in order to do that, because you don't own this repository, you have to make what's called a fork. So you do this via the fork button up in the top right hand corner up here. So if you click fork, they ask you what account you should fork it to. So I want to copy to my personal account. And um, it'll tell you that you're copying it across. And we now have a copy of the metaphor repository on my own personal account. And you can see this based on the URL again. So we have my username rather than Wolfgang's and metaphor. Um, and again, it's a similar way as if you created a separate branch within a single repository. It gives you information that it's even with Wolfgang's main branch. So any code I add to this will prompt GitHub to open a pull request. So for, again, for a very small example, just for, for the sake of, um, I'm gonna add a, a small space just for something tiny. I'm gonna commit the changes. And if I go back now, GitHub will tell me that I'm slightly ahead of Wolfgang's main branch and will allow me to open a pull request. So this is a really nice way of adding in new code to packages um, if you're interested in contributing to them. A good workflow generally is to open an issue on the repository you want to contribute to, asking the maintainer if they're interested in you opening a pull request. So if interested in you forking their repository, um, adding your code and then asking them to pull in the changes you've made uh, before just randomly opening a pull request. But this is the way you do it. So it's a similar workflow. You fork the package, you add your code, and then you ask the maintainer to pull in the changes via a pull request. Excellent. And then just one final thing I want to cover from the contributing level is that it's possible to copy the repository into OR Studio um, 
quite straightforwardly. So this big green button here, you click code and you copy the link provided. So you click this button, copy it. Then if you go to OR Studio and go file a new project, uh, I don't want to save that. Or is not playing nice. So it'll give you these options of how you want to create a new project. So the version, the, the option you're looking for, I gave it away there, is version control. Um, Git, because it's a Git repository. And then if you paste the URL you've copied here, you'll see that it automatically populates the metaphor directory name. Um, and you can now choose to create the project. So I always open in a new session, but that's just habit. Um, and you can choose where to create the project as a subdirectory. So this is all assuming that you have Git set up and you can interact with GitHub. But again, I'd refer you to the happy Git with OR um, book because it'll get you up and running with this in no time. It's a really, really fantastic resource. Um, so what's happening now is that it's the software is copying GitHub or the metaphor repository from GitHub to my local computer, where I'll be able to work with it in OR to add new functionality or to make changes to what it already exists. So you can see that all of the files are now here within an OR Studio project. So it's just to show you how you can, you can work with that um, or how you can copy projects from GitHub across to OR Studio very straightforwardly. Excellent, close all that down. Right, what have I missed? So the final level of user that I just want to very briefly touch on, because this will probably be a very small minority of people, is those who are maintaining packages and um, using GitHub as a platform to do so. So there's three kind of main benefits to this. Um, and the first one is good bug tracking. So again, uh, I'll go back to RobViz, which is my own package as an example but a really good way of keeping track of what you have to do and what's not working with the package and allowing other people who use your package to submit bug reports or issues or problems um, is using GitHub issues. So here you can see the, the selection of issues that are currently open based on this search criteria. Um, currently open on the Rob Viz uh, repository and it just lets me know what I have to do rather than people sending me emails and me having to keep track of, of what different people are saying. So it's one of the major advantages of putting your the code for your or package up on GitHub um, and allowing people to interact with it and report bug issues all in one centralized place. And there are other options but to me I think this is a really great advantage of GitHub as a platform. The second then is what's called GitHub Actions, which is what gives this badge on the README, which is the ORCMD check passing. So essentially it runs ORCMD check, um, which is again some, a collection of standard tests that all packages must pass uh, or should pass, um, but it, it runs it automatically for your package every time you make a change. So it's a really good way of making sure, and it also runs it across multiple platforms. So Mac, o, Mac OS, Linux, and um, Windows. So it's a great way of ensuring not only that every change you make uh, is, doesn't break the package, but also that it works across multiple platforms, which is quite hard to test manually. Um, so it's a, it's a really good resource. Again, it, this used to be managed by uh, appliances or applications like Travis or AppLayer but it's all done in-house now by GitHub Actions and setting it up is, is really, really easy. Um, and then the final thing that's really useful for package owners is the ability to set up an associated um, website with your GitHub repository. So if you go to settings and you scroll down to GitHub pages, um, it's simply a case of turning this on uh, and pointing it towards where your website would be. A good option for building your package website is the package down or package. And it makes it quite straightforward to, to build quite a nice looking package. But GitHub allows you to serve this package for free with an associated link. So you can see here, this is the link to the RobViz one. And if we open it up, 
we should yeah have quite a nice looking website that we can point people to and that contains a lot of the documentation um, and tutorials um, and change log for the RobViz package. So again, it's an extra aspect of GitHub that really makes it a really good kind of holistic approach to sharing and accessing and storing or packages. So yeah, that's probably quite, quite advanced and quite niche, but it's just to show you if you are quite familiar with OR and developing OR packages, that GitHub does have some aspects that can really help you out. Um, I think that's it for me. I'm just reading through the last few bits I've meant to cover. I hope that's everything. I can't tell how long I've been either. My time is broke. But if people have questions, again, please pose them to me to Slack or tweet at me. Um, I'll just throw this up while I'm talking. Yeah, please do tweet at me or uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'm very happy to talk about any of this. If I've said anything wrong, feel free to point it out. I won't take any issue. Um, I'm really glad to have so many people attending the conference and hopefully something I spoke about today will be of use to people. But other than that, um, wishing you a very nice weekend and happy coding. <laughs>